I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. You probably have heard about the infamous decision rendered by Judge Eileen Cannon of the federal bench there in, in, in the state of Florida. A, a ruling that I believe in terms of its era, in terms of its it's probably a ruling that will last as a violation of all the spirit and the letter of the law will, will last throughout infamy. Unbelievable that such a ruling that she gave that primarily was set up to say that Donald John Trump, who is the trigger of the tribulation, is essentially above the law. She has set a precedent that has cracked the very foundation of the founding fathers. Were the, the proverb of the saying that someone was turning over in their graves, the founding fathers would not understand how anyone who has studied law, either the letter or the spirit, could have ruled as a violation of democracy in the Constitution elevating one man in America above the law. And the man that she elevated was not some saint. He was a St. Patrick or St. John. The man she elevated, Donald John Trump, the trigger of the tribulation, is perhaps one of the greatest con men or con man that has ever walked upright on planet Earth. Everybody knows that he is a liar, Donald Trump lies the way people breathe. But more than that, she elevated a man and dictated that the Justice Department of America should keep their hands off of this man who has put the lives of everyone on planet Earth in jeopardy by taking top secret nuclear weapons, nuclear devices, information about our neighboring adversaries or our enemies and stocked it away in his desk at his country club and government records that belong to the government she has now stated or intimated should be given back to him. This is unprecedented vileness and violation and miscarriage and unconscionable, if you will, act of anybody who has ever sat on a bench anywhere, even in a dictatorial communist nation. No judge has ever ruled as vile as this ruling. And I, I want to be able to say that the whole legal profession everywhere are up in arms that she has elevated a man above the law. And this is going to stand that not the law is no longer equal to every man under the Constitution. But you know what I want to say, the reason why I'm doing this piece today, I want to point out there are some judges that have treated me uh, as this, this judge treated uh, Donald John Tribulation Trump. A judge named not Eileen Cannon, but Arlene Bluth gave a ruling against me and against our beloved church, the Bethelite Community Baptist Church and its evangelistic ministry, Art Law Ministry. Judge Bluth, Arlene P. Bluth, gave a summary judgment of a foreclosure against our church, awarding the Mellon Bank the opportunity to seize our property. Now, listen to this very carefully, because it all can be documented uh, in our court filings. We'll put the index number up uh, so you can, if you want to go and, and find it for yourself. But Judge Arlene Blue, like this Judge Eileen Cannon, gave a grievous, if you will, ruling, a heartbreak, a travesty, an unconscionable ruling against our church when we didn't even have a lawyer. I was standing at the bench, not in the audience, I was standing at the bench dismissing one of perhaps the worst untrustworthy 
the, 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 the most untrustworthy lawyer of the year and a person named Mark Anderson, I was dismissing him. And while I dismissed him at the bench, she gave a ruling to, to foreclose our church when we, I didn't have a lawyer. And I want to state that I believe that she did this because she's very much aware well, Judge Arling Bluth is a major figure and important person in the leadership and the development of the LGBTQ various organizations here in the New York City area and across America. She has served as chairperson or chairwoman on, on most of the organizations or for at least five different LGBTQ type organizations here in the New York area, New York area and yet she sits on the bench as a judge. Um, she knows that I stand on the word of God and the word of God says in Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13 that man shall not lie with mankind. So it is my belief, the reason why Judge Blue gave a ruling when I didn't have an attorney and gave an unfavorable ruling awarding the Mellon Bank a summary judgment, like this atrocious ruling, giving Donald John Trump status above the law by this justice canon down in Florida that the whole world is looking at as a travesty. The only difference between Judge Arlene Bluth and Judge Eileen Cannon is that Judge Arlene Bluth is in a lower position in a dark corner court where she probably will never rise to the level of the federal bench and will probably be never be known with the notoriety nor be given the opportunity to inflict pain and to inflict injustice at the level that Judge Eileen Cannon has inflicted injustice. Uh, but she nonetheless, when it comes to who I am, knowing that I believe God's word, knowing that Jesus said what Moses said in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, Jesus said that the law of God is here to stay. Jesus said he did not come to change the law. Jesus said in Matthew's gospel, chapter 5, verse 17 and following, that the laws of Moses are here and he is here to fulfill them, that man shall not lie with mankind as with woman. But that ain't all. There's more tragedy to this story or this event. And as the whole world, the whole legal profession in America is reeling under the absolutely asinine, hot to trot, if you will, uh, ruling by Eileen Cannon, lifting Donald John Trump above the law, telling the entire Justice Department that the criminal investigation must be stopped and that the reputation of, Judge, of Donald John Trump must be uh, protected even though Donald John Trump is perhaps one of the most scandalous individuals that have ever walked on planet Earth. The man is incapable of telling the truth. And I don't say that as some sort of, if you will, proverb or some sort of smear. It is the absolute truth. As man is incapable of flying on his own. Donald John Trump does not know, cannot, does not have the understanding to tell the truth. He lives and thrives on lies the way other people live and thrive on air. Lies is the essence of his blood system. He is a fluke. He is an unusual individual of all the persons that have been born over the stretch of humanity. He is an unusual person who cannot tell the truth. George Washington said, I can't lie. Trump can't tell the truth. And yet this judge protected and defended him at the cost of saying that our judicial system, our constitutional system, our legal system is no longer every man equal under the law. There is one man that is above the law. And she wrote it in an opinion of 24 pages and gave him a get out of jail free card. But let me tell you just one more tragic event 
about judges as we are reeling on the, this decision. Judge Francis A. Con the third. That's the little short guy there hugging the tall guy. After the foreclosure summary judgment given by Judge Arling P. Blue, it was then handed over to Judge Francis Kahn to order the sale of the property, our beloved church on 123rd Street. Our 62-year institution that has served over one million meals to hungry bellies here in the community of Harlem, and we've never asked a nickel or a dime from the government, the city, or the state to help us to serve the meals. We run a school from kindergarten to 12th grade that have seen our graduates accepted at Yale, Juilliard, Cadoza Law School, New York Law School, New York University, Fordham, St. John's. The beat goes on of the excellent education that our school does. We have a homeless shelter that is housed in homes, housed people for more than 40 years. And Judge Bluth said, sell it. And Judge Kahn said, give the Mellon Bank 18% interest on what had been the lien going back to the year 2002. It was, and Judge Kahn, I may ask, as we look, as the whole legal world is reeling under the lunacy of this woman, Eileen Cannon. Judge Kahn also is a leading member of the LGBTQ community here in the city of New York. The man, the tall man you see standing is handing to Judge Kahn, who sits on the bench here in the New York State Supreme Court, handing him a trophy, awarding him a lifetime membership in the lesbian and gay straight community here in the city of New York. And he is so happy. Look at that smile on Judge Kahn's face for being inducted as a lifetime member of the gay and straight community. And again, I am one who believes the word of God. Jesus said that he upholds the law the law that God wrote with his very own finger and gave it to Moses. He wrote Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, with his very own finger that says that man shall not lie with mankind as with womankind, that it is an abomination and it's whoever does it is worthy to be put to death. Now, I know how y'all get. I know y'all think the world revolves around you and anybody that believes that verse is considered a hater and you want to do everything you can to impede their opportunity of constitutional freedoms, constitutional uh, judgments, constitutional opportunities to live here in America. Y'all want to preclude that person, anyone who doesn't agree well, what, your, what is a, an abomination in the mind of God? And Jesus comes along in Matthew's gospel, chapter 5 and 17, and says, I uphold what God wrote with his own finger in 2013 of Leviticus. And that man that lies with mankind, a woman that lies with womankind, is an abomination that's worthy of death. Jesus comes along and says, I have come to fulfill it in Matthew's gospel, chapter five, verse 17. And so when I, as a man of God, as a servant of the Lord, stands up and say, I believe God, you now through your power of the LGBTQ army will now ostracize label as do everything you can to put that person out of any liberties and what I believe that both Judge Kahn and both Judge Bluth have done is that they have ruled against us because we do not support their bedroom preferences. Now think about this for just a second. I'm going to let y'all go. You've been listening to me for quite some time. Thank you for giving me this much of your time. I know your time is precious. But think about what the world has come to when you look at what Judge Eileen Cannon has done. It is a scream what she's done to protect Donald John Trump and to upset democracy. Democracy, the Constitution of America, will never be the same again. But look at what the LGBTQ community has done to persons such as myself. They have said, if you don't agree with our abominable According to the Bible, worthy of death, according to the Bible, not me, but according to the Bible, worthy of death, sexual practices, we will ostracize you. We will do everything. We'll label you a hater, 
and we'll make sure that you can enjoy the fruits of America or the merits of the justice system will not be meted out to you unless you agree with our sexual practices. And here's the thing that's a screen. Here it is. Think of this. When, what, what I believe that Judge Kahn and Judge Bluth in ruling to take down our church and shut it down, what they did was, and what all LGBTQ people, young and old, far and wide, believe and now and lockstep promote, if you don't agree with their sexual practices, they make decisions about the efficacy and about whether or not the entitlement, you are entitled to humanity, they make decisions about whether you are entitled to a job, whether you're entitled to a position, whether you're entitled and the efficacy of your opportunity to share in life based on not whether you are racist, whether you believe in black and white, or whether you're an intellectual and a philosopher and believe that some people are base and void in their abilities to understand the world, not as whether you're a misogynist or whether you're xenophobia or xenophobic or whether or not you are, or any of these things, or whether you're tall or short or athlete or non-athlete, those are not the criteria of ethics by which the LGBT TQ now affords people the entitlement or the will. They believe that unless you accept not their religion, not their education, not their race, they believe unless you accept their sexual practices, which I'm going to be a little bit jarring here. This is a little language is going to be a little bit unsettling, and I understand that, and I have great respect for you, and I don't mean to be contemptible or disrespect. But it has boiled down to the LGBTQ people far and wide, young and old, hold this principle. You're not entitled to the pursuit of happiness and life, nor are you entitled to the rulings of justice under the courts and the merits of the law, unless you believe in the way they F and who they F. Now, I know that's a bit disturbing. I understand that. But I got to get your attention. I will imagine this that these people, these LGBTQ people, they believe that the way they F and who they F is the criteria by where they judge everything else that go. They judge religion, they judge God, they judge ethics, everything. The, the highest, the ultimate concern, the ultimate priority of the sickness of the LGBTQ people is how you F and who you F. That takes priority over your talents, whether you're qualified to do a job, whether you deserve it of justice or not. No, if you don't approve of how they F and who they F, then you are not entitled to anything else. First, you got to approve of their effing, and then you can be perhaps be given the awards of the Constitution and its law. It is a scream, finally, and I'm gonna let you go. That what Judge Eileen Cannon did um, in Florida with, with Trump will live in infamy as perhaps the worst, I mean single-handed, hand, hands down, the worst decision by any judge anywhere at any time, affecting more people, elevating, actually trashing the Constitution. And yet, judges like Arlene Bluth and Francis Kahn who will never see the light of day, will never be lifted up, will never be known of that at that level. They'll never serve at such high, have done the same thing to so many people, not just to me. I'm not the only one that these judges have stolen their property, actually did not give them the benefit of the law, did not give them the benefit of the merits of the law. And, and we can prove this. I've got people who are in the wings ready to testify. These same two justices who are flaming, if you will, uh, members and proponents of homosexuality have done this to several other people as well. It is sad that it has come to this. But I, I want to tell you this, that I do plan to overturn their prejudice, bedroom, if you will, decisions, because I disagree with who they F and how they F. So sad. It is so sad. It, it is so sad. If you don't agree with how they F, and who they have, and I know that's unsettling, I understand that, and please forgive me if you are offended by it, I, I know. 
But let me say this to the Mellon Bank, and I'm, I'm going to be through again. I thank you for your time. Uh, you've been very, very patient with me throughout this dialogue, uh, if you will, or this monologue. Um, that to the Mellon Bank, we're going to take you down. Uh, now, you may not believe that, but it's going to happen. And it, because of these judges that rule the way they did, they have now put your bank, your institution, your 250-year institution in jeopardy because you have taken, you've ruled against God and ruled against his, his servant and ruled against his people. We're going to take you down. But I, I can offer you this as an opportunity. First of all, uh, have those judges dismiss those, this, that decision to foreclose our church, number one and we'll leave you alone. Number two, that you repay us our $650,000 in legal spence, expenses that we spent over the years. Uh, and, and again, we were, you, you do that, we will relent. And thirdly, that you would allow for a, or support our lawyers doing a judicial review of Judge Kahn and Judge Blue to look at those decisions, the timeliness of how they ruled and what they ruled and how we were absolutely trampled on. You know, I would call this, this, this segment Three Blind Mice, but I would also want to add, and a rat, and that rat is Mark Anderson, perhaps one of the sleaziest attorneys that have ever slipped in and out of a, a seat in a law school. I'm talking about somebody who you not only should count your fingers if you shake hands with this guy, you should count your toes as well and count your orifices, orifices. This guy is slicker than slick. And he has no intent of pursuing the power of the law for his clients, but the power of the law to get as much money out of anybody who's fool enough to sign a contract or retain her. He starts working on getting money out of you and then sending you off to hell. But let me say further, uh, Mellon Bank, I'm going to ask that you uh, demand, I will say demand, that for us to finally agree not to take you down, which we're going to do. Now, people dismiss, that's just preacher talk. He ain't got the power to do that. He ain't this, that, and the other. But you, you're listening, and I'm teaching. We're going to take you down, Mellon Bank. We're going to take you down. And, however, we will relent. But in addition to dismissing these charges, we want you to give $100 million to Mercy Shield. People like Michael Jordan and Oprah Winfrey and Jay-Z and Barack Hussein Obama, uh, they've got their money in your bank on the asset management and that Van Jones given $100 million by Jeff Bezos. That money should be given to, Mella, to the Mercy Ships. We're not just going to settle for you uh, dismissing the charges. We're going to demand that you give up for all of our troubles that you give $100 million of that $50 trillion that you're sitting on right now, Mellon Bank, to Mercy Ships to help these poor children as they are struggling for life. That $100 million would do a lot to straighten out legs and to, to heal cleft lips and to remove gorders and give children the opportunity to grow up and be normal once again. And $100 million, you wouldn't even miss it, Mellon Bank. So that is a part of our demands. But I have to say, I've lived a long time in America on planet Earth. I never thought that I would see judges rule like Judge Eileen Cannon, Arlene P. Bluth, Francis A. Kahn III. I, I, just, I just never imagined. But this is where we are. I don't know how much you believe in the power of God or his word. But I'm going to see to it. Mar Merrick Garland and Department of Justice are at a quandary about how to approach this matter because if they appeal it, it could drag on forever. But I'm going to solve it both for the Justice Department and for justice for all. Me and my God, his name is Jesus. We're not going to rest. You tried to take our church because we don't approve of who you F. That's wrong. That's so, it's so vile. 
anybody who thinks that way, first you must approve of not of my ethics or my race or my religion. You must approve of who I am. Anybody who thinks like that is an integral pygmy. There's just no words to describe how low your intellectual capacities are to judge humanity based on whether or not they approve of your violation and your abominable sexual practices of who you have. Lord have mercy. Anyone such as my strength with wind can simply blow over an institution that is based its criteria on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness based on who they F. That is sick. I'm James David Manning. I'm the Lord's servant. The Mellon Bank to Judge Bluth and to Judge Francis A. Kahn III, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved, we shall not, we shall not be moved, sing it, we shall not, we shall not be moved, we shall not, we shall not be moved. In the midst the war we fight on, standing on the word of God we stand strong. We shall We're not afraid and ain't backing down. There's a new sheriff here in this town. We shall not, we shall not be moved. You can't try, but you won't succeed. The time is run closer when you will be. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Forgot to have mercy on your poor soul. You'll find out soon you're not in control. We shall not, we shall not be moved Singing, we shall not, we shall not be moved We shall not, we shall not be moved Singing, we shall not, we shall not be moved We shall not, we shall not be moved You push me We're gonna tear your kingdom straight down And when we're done you won't be around We shall not We shall not be moved We shall not We shall not be moved We shall Now we 
shall not be moved. Mother of many now. We shall not be moved. All the elders now. We shall not be moved. All the mothers now. We shall not be moved. Come on, stop your feet. We shall not be moved. Come on, clap your hands. We shall not be moved. Sing it, we shall. We shall not be moved. 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 We shall not be moved.